After you left the other day, Sam mm. asked if I had seen your underwear. <laughs> and it was weird that he even thought that I would have seen your underwear. He's right. like, oh, come on, dude, relax. I'm like, I didn't even say anything yet. I was like, why? What about his underwear? He's like, uh, they were like super cool, like vintage army looking underwear. <laughs> and I was like, was he bending over? He's like, yeah, he was bending over. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, he was bending over. <laughs> This video is brought to you by headphones.com. They got the domain. That's my pitch for them always. They got it. They got the domain. More on them later. Yes. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris. My name is Michael. I am also from Theo and Harris. And today we are at Bulova headquarters in uh, you know, in tell about America's it. lovely New York City. You know what's crazy too? I'm obviously what? off camera, but I'm mic'd everywhere. We are at the yeah, Bulova Museum. This is wild. <laughs> this, this is, is wild. crazy. Our, our friends at Bulova had mentioned before, oh, you need to stop by, stop by the office at the, at the Empire State Building. And I was like, yeah, that sounds incredibly cool. I, I, I have a fascination with the Empire State Building. Yes. But, uh, but I don't know, we finally made it here. Phenomenal. Little anecdote, as you know, we've probably heard it too many times, yes. but uh, my great-grandfather, Silvio Granga, uh, was, he, he worked on the Empire State Building. He was on the plumbing team with, uh, uh, it was JL, uh, Murphy was the last name of, of, of the plumbing company. Um, and their, their plumbing is still in this building. And my, he was very proud of this. And he was actually the last living person who, who had worked on the Empire State Building. So when he turned 90-something, he ended up passing at 99. But in 90-something, uh, it was a major publication, I don't know if it was the New York Times, but a major publication, sent a limo out to his little home on Long Island and picked him up and he wore his little fedora no and way. he came to the Empire State Building and, you know, like a... He like, fixed some things. Yeah, <laughs> like an old, you know, curmudgeon man, you know, you probably didn't, uh, he was happy, but you yeah. would never know it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right. It goes, uh, like the way I left it, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, I told you it wasn't gonna break. You know that yeah, kind of right, thing. Right. But anyway, it just feels cool to be here. You know, uh, it just feels cool to be here. This is the first live where I looked at a watch and like I don't want to say I got chills or my heart raced or anything. That's pretty dramatic. But I got a little like you know that little surprise like whatever your body's doing that like sends out a little shock like a little yep. adrenaline rush. Yep. I got it today with oh with the watch <laughs> with, with what <laughs> with, with what what did that to you. <laughs> I am a massive Elvis fan as of recent because yeah, I saw of, the Elvis yeah. movie. And we have Elvis's actual watch in front of us. And I'll tell you what gave me that adrenaline rush at the end. But I was like, were you when you said I'm a massive Elvis fan, were you afraid that I was going to say as of recent, as if to qualify? Because you immediately oh, qualified. No, it. you know what? It's because my Poser. my <laughs> other friends would be like, oh, because you saw the movie. Yeah, no, I, you saw the well, movie well right yes, now? because I saw the movie yeah I'm like yeah I didn't know I had no idea it's amazing anyways though his watch is right there yeah it's amazing it's an incredible Accutron watch uh, that I, I will discuss at length later toward yes. the end of the video oh, you're wearing and, the modern um, reissue. and I'm wearing the modern reissue as well which is like basically pound for pound like the same exact watch just brand new uh, phenomenal okay so first watch we want to talk about today this, this watch is very you. This is a Bulova digital watch. Yeah, there are no hands. It's a digital read, you know, in the most traditional sense. Yeah, um, 1932. I, 1932 watch, yep. These watches were popular. This style of watch was popular in the 20s and the 30s, and then kind of never again. Uh, they began, they, they were made again in the 70s, but with different style. They were larger, they were funkier. To me, they, they this is the style. Crossed like that Adam design with yeah. it. Yeah, but this is like, classic uh, Art Deco kind of style. I love how ornate it is. Um, I love Jump Hours. Uh, I've got a little story with the Jump Hour. Um, I, I always wanted one. I, mm -hmm. I loved them dearly. It was one of the first watches when I was in the watch business that I was like, okay, that is, that is so different. That is so amazing. I need to have one. So my parents got me one for my college graduation, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, wow, that seems like so long ago. It was 2016. A while, thirty years ago. This is thirty-five years ago. Yeah. yeah I can't believe um, it. Anyway, it was. Um, it's beautiful. I love wearing it. I have it on like a purple alligator strap. Um, but this one is even more ornate and has these like. Um, what's the word? Like I just stepped, like step yeah, pyramid, sides. almost like on the sides. That actually does remind me quite a bit of the Empire State Building, which is kind of cool. Right. Which is where, where we are. are. Um, yeah. This is just a phenomenal watch. Obviously, it's two tone. Uh, what is probably gold plate, and then I suppose. 
1930s steel. gold plate, though, which is a, a different vibe. It's also immaculate. Like, this watch is immaculate. It's in the museum. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, and also what I want to say about this is that you've liked these watches for a very long time. Yep. And I haven't noticed you wearing yours a ton. Yep. So by what's been happening so far, that means these are going to come back in fashion pretty soon. Yes. And people will have forgotten that you were wearing them a long time ago. Yeah. And then Dime Piece is going to post a blog on them. <laughs> Dime piece will get all the credit. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, these are these are some of my favorite watches. This, especially this metal bracelet's very interesting. It's very ornate and it's spaced. I believe that's called a ladder bracelet. That's pretty sweet. I, I would probably put it on leather, just because I think these look sweet with that. Yes. But I mean, the rarity of seeing the actual bracelet with it is crazy. Totally. Obviously, again, it's a, it's the literal museum from the brand, so yes. you'd expect to see it. But it's cool to see it in the flesh like that. I would love to see Bulova reissue or reimagine oh, yeah. a jump hour watch. A little bit larger even. I'd be happy to make some concessions there. Mm -hmm. um, not too many, but a little bit. I would love to see that. Um, again, Bulova's done such a good job with the Lunar Pilot, with with uh, the mill ships, so many different watches uh, that that this could this could in theory be in the pipeline. It's I, I don't know that and it's I mean, not. Yeah, I think. Yeah, right. It's actually I don't think it is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know but, that and it's not. Uh, and it's not. Um, but that would be very cool. I just love jump hours. So yeah. Bulova has a lot of well actually an insane amount of history. And when you really look at it, like Bulova has been along like every era they have an iconic watch. Yes. And I remember even I don't know what it's called specifically, but for the longest time I wanted a it's just basically it's a regular three handed watch but it has a whale on it, the whale on the bottom. Yeah, they, they, they have one over yeah, here. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's reminding me. It's right over there. Yeah, the alarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it's like those little things, like Sea King. Sea, yes, Sea yeah. King. I've wanted a bull of a Sea King for <laughs> such a long time, just because that whale. Yeah. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they've been along every step of the way. Why'd you look at me when you said whale? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, one time I, when Taylor visited, um, she was in New York, and she, I don't have yogurt for breakfast usually, but yogurt and granola, okay. I'm obsessed with. I love your green granola. I love granola. So we're walking through the city, and I was like, oh, we better pick up some more yogurt because like, we're out. Yeah. And she goes, you ate all that yogurt in three days? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Yeah. And she goes, oh. She looks you up and down. So like, in regular speed, it was like, you ate all that yogurt in three days? Oh, and I was god. like, oh my god. And then she was cracking up, and she was oh, like, that's not why I did that. I was like, then why did you do it? Yeah. And she was like, where'd the yogurt go? I, ate, I did eat it all. I ate it all in three days. Yeah. yeah, it felt horrible. Anyways, yeah, Sea King, phenomenal. This video is brought to you by headphones.com. Specifically, we're looking at the Focal Batiste, yep. which are amazing headphones, and they kind of are the epitome of a you and me product. 100%. I, even, even my dad bring him into the equation. Right. Uh, I, I let him borrow my Focals uh, from headphones.com just last week when he went on a business trip. I, I just I knew it would blow his mind. I knew it would yeah, blow his mind. That's a huge audiophile. Uh, you know, listen, watch people and audio people and car people for that matter. And right? camera There's people. incredible synergy there because it's, it's rooted in people who understand quality and will sacrifice in other places of their life if they have to, to experience the quality of, um, yes. of a fine watch, of, of the sound of that movement, of, of true like experience. Because that's what, that's what these headphones are. I mean, I mean it's yeah. not you know, just music, you know, it's exactly. an experience. I mean, that's the, the big thing is that it goes two ways, right? Like you listen to it on the airplane or you listen to it at home, you're chilling. And then I'll do the same thing, but when I'm editing, I will use the USB-C plug and use the DAC that is in the headphones so I can hear everything that I need to. There is two levels of noise cancellation. There's transparency mode. There is everything that you possibly need in, which is very important in the watch community, a premium aluminum package. The actual drivers are made in France. Focal has some of the best audio equipment in the entire world. It's not just the music for me. It's the music when I want to when I want to break yeah, from work. For sure. But when I'm working, I just want you know noise canceling, maybe something classical, just really just you know in the background, and it's like I'm in my own little world. I mean, if I had like horse blinders on, I really would be in my You'd own world. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So anyway, that's my pitch for Focal and for Headphones.com. Remarkable one-stop shop for for audio files. Um, I highly recommend. Them. So do I. I mean, they got the domain. Okay, so we go from 1932, which I want to get one of these watches out. Yeah. I have also declared to you that I'm going to get every one of these watches. Yes. To 1973. Yes. With the Bulova Bamk. 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 Bam. B A M K. Wow. I know. I never heard of that before, but I will say that this 
Is that caramel? Uh, is no, that, this is the watch. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> this like caramel vignette dial, super funky. What's the year on? 1973. Makes perfect sense. It's clearly like an early 70s, you know. I mean, it's a 70s design, you know. Yeah. Very, uh, again, still elegant. That was still cool. But now it's funkier, you know. The the uptight days of suit and tie without, you know, Mad Men is gone, right? We're getting toward the end of the Don Draper era here. Yeah, you right. Know? Get funky. Uh, this looks like something from Star Wars. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Very cool watch. Um, again, I, and this is something we were discussing pretty recently on, on, on one of our videos, how I think that, you know, a large portion of the watch community is, like I said, turning three now. Right. Uh, and right. and what, I, what I mean by that is there, there was such a great influx of new enthusiasts uh, into the industry. Mm -hmm. which is phenomenal, and I'm so glad they're here. It made the industry larger and, you know, more money. it's more money in my pocket, exactly right. Yes. Uh, and I just got a parking ticket, so I need that money. Oh, uh, <laughs> you think this parking ticket was $115? You think they repoed the car. <laughs> yeah, it's $115, and I'm very upset about it. Uh, anyway, um, you know, when people get into watches or any, you know, hobby in the beginning, you immediately, you know, uh, go to the more obvious, more popular, you know, spots. You go to the obvious yeah, watches, of course. you know? And then as you're turning three and four and five, your taste. You get that deep and dark shame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're looking at your, your watch, you're like, what yeah. I thinking? Your, your tastes begin to get more personal, uh, weirder. Um, you, you begin to, you know, say you want to, what was once out of the question and too daring is now like, that's the only thing that excites me exactly. now. Well, we have so many friends who, we've both been in this for a while, but get into watches and you could see just this like ebb and flow of totally. being like, ah, I don't know. It usually goes like, I like all these basic watches. I, I don't know if I'm really like super into watches anymore. And then they discover that it's yes. not just yes. like, these type of watches and everything changes. Yes, exactly. So anyway, my point here is watches like this, watches from the 70s, and they're, they're not back yet, like this sort of style of watches. It's not in style. Um, they're beautiful. And I think that they're... You know, I mean, timeless is a funny word because timeless generally means like the watch that they're broken. yeah they're, <laughs> that they're unobjectionable in style and they're very you know they're 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 well designed but they're very basic and and, and timeless like a gray suit like a black tie you know right. um, that being said I think that these these things will always be interesting mm -hmm. forever and whether they are in fashion or not they will be, always be beautiful and interesting so and 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 with that always have a not just a potential, but a great potential to be in style again. Because the, the crowd will always, you know, flock to the same. And it always changes. It's it, always, what is someone not wearing? Exactly. Always, 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 always. Yes. So I would love to see more stuff like this. Brown vignette. When are you seeing that? No. You, you know, you when really are you aren't. seeing something like that? It's super cool. I wish they did a reissue, though, huh? Well, that's, uh, well, we'll see. I guess we'll see. I oh. guess we'll see. Uh, and, and obviously, the, the last watch here um, is is wild. I mean, this is this, this is, is the king's watch. This is the king's watch. This is the king's watch. Without any further ado, I could when it was behind the counter there and behind the glass. I didn't think that they were gonna let us play with no, it. No, of course. Yeah, not. of course not. I, I said very casually, like, is there like three watches we can get from the museum to look at? You're like the Elvis, first thing Elvis, to Elvis, in my Elvis. head. I was like, oh my god. But I, I even said I was like, you know, white glove person come over and, and then it kind of dawned on me where I was like this is a watch you know yeah. it's, it's not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's not like we're pulling out like a painting with a layer yes. over it I'm like this is a watch from the 60s yes that happened to belong to the most famous rock star of all time yes yeah that is why it's wild that's so great he wore this watch he wore this watch and now we're touching it how bizarre you know there are some people watching this video being like put that watch I know down yeah what do you love about Elvis his music. You're f***ing unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> his, Michael texted me after he watched Elvis. Movie. And he actually delayed me watching it by like a couple of, like a little while. Because your sales pitch was horrible. It never is good. Michael's sales pitch to, for me to watch the Elvis movie uh, was I'm depressed, I guess. something to the effect is? of, yeah. yeah, I'm in a really bad place Please right now. <laughs> because Elvis was so cool. And God forbid he just say I. He said, and we are so just not cool. He had to throw me in the mix <laughs> too. Really oh yeah. That's so funny. And but you're right it's though. True. Like you're it's a hundred, true. like I don't just don't need to be reminded of that. Did you feel it when you watched the movie? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, I mean, the, the you know his decline made me feel better about myself. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. You know, but, but oh, dude, I I was yeah. in Denmark with Taylor, and we were like just chilling, and I was kind of bummed out for whatever reason. And she was like, I know, we'll cheer you up. And she put on Elvis, and I was like, two seconds later, I was like singing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. incredible. So anyway, this is bizarre. It's so cool to be able to hold this watch. Um, let's talk about Accutron for a second. Yeah, tuning fork. Yes. Changed kind of everything. Yeah, you know, and we'll have like a casual kind of conversation about it, you know. We're doing another part of talking about that Yeah, it's... The quartz, revel the, the, the quartz crisis, which came a little bit later, which is bizarre, you know. It's very weird. Like, which obviously came at a different part of the world. Like, yeah. so watchmaking was making tremendous progress in the first half of the 20th century mm -hmm. in, in not, just, not just accuracy, but in uh, shock resistance, in you know, water resistance, in, you know, they went from dust proof, which meant virtually nothing, nothing. to waterproof, you know, in, in a matter of yeah. years. Yeah. It's wild how much progress was being made. And there were people Okay, and maybe this is just me being stupid, right? But right. like, <laughs> but it's I. It's very impressive to to make the mechanical watch better. That is remarkable, right? These people are these people that did these stuff were brilliant, right? Sure. But to me, it's I can understand that. I can wrap my head around it. Sure. I can wrap my head around someone saying, "Our the watches are dust proof right now. How do we make them waterproof?" Well. How is anything waterproof? Can we apply similar principles to watches? Sure. That's not genius to me. It's valuable, but it's yeah. not genius. Right. But for someone to say, watches have been made and made a certain way forever, and they've been powered by it in a certain fashion forever, what if I power them with entirely new technology? What? <laughs> <laughs> you and me sitting there? You know? You and, uh, us sitting in the 60s as this is being invented, being like, well, yeah, like, why? like I don't think that like like PayPal, right? Right. You brought banking online. I don't think you're that smart well, for that. We talked about this. There, there is always a time <laughs> for when when there is a major shift in culture. There's a time to just become millionaires with very billionaire. I mean, you know, billionaire. You, you, you're yeah. you're literally bringing what is already existing onto the new platform. Electricity is big. Let's put it in a car. I'm the first one that did it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, g gamers, right? Like gamers just went on Twitch and made millions of dollars. Exactly. You're not that smart for. Uh, you're. God bless you. I, I, you know. God bless you. If I had your money, I'd burn mine. No doubt about that. Yeah. But. But that is an incremental. But when you think of it, like, no, I'm going to invent the new technology. Right. Completely. Inventing the internet versus inventing PayPal. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that's no slight to Musk. I love Elon Musk. You know, whatever. But but it just you know it's just a, just an example. You know. Yeah, so that's what I think about when I look at Accutron. I'm just like, where did you? What even gave you this idea to in, to invent this tuning you know, fork movement? Yes. That hums like that's crazy. totally futuristic before the Jetsons even existed because it is Jetsons technology. Yeah. 100%. That that was the future of timekeeping. Yeah. Uh, to me, like. They understood the importance of quartz before quartz. It's crazy. It's like whenever I'm editing an Accutron film, especially when we're using the tuning fork, but I put it in every Accutron film always. Like it's very easy to put a tick, 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 tick. You yeah. see it in every watch, film, channel, whatever. Tick, 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 tick. Accutron is cool. And I put it, you, sometimes you don't even hear it. Like the last one, I, it, I didn't even make it loud. You probably don't know it's there. But I put the hum, mm. the same frequency hum. Wow. Always in those videos because it's so iconic that you aren't the brand associated with just a TikTok. Yes. You have like a... Yeah. Like, that's cool. That was pretty good, by the way. <laughs> was it really? I don't know. <laughs> Your jaw went out. You're like... <laughs> Jimmy Smash. I'm like... I want to do shark bites. I'm uh, like, it's so cool to have like a watch like sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that's my, that's my and, fascination. And going off of that, that, that little rant you just did. Yeah. Elvis was very... Very, very about that technology, apparently. Yeah. Priscilla Presley, yeah. you know, you're familiar, said like his biggest thing was like finding the newest piece of technology. He was obsessed with that. Yes. And that's why he was so obsessed with Accutron, because he was like, that's crazy. Well, and what was the, the, the brand speak, right? It was the, the prince from another planet. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, maybe I'm connecting dots that aren't even there and whatever, that's fine, but yeah. that's what that's what marketers do, right? Yeah, sure. um, but like, uh, yeah, I, I, I am endlessly fascinated by Accutron as a, as a, as a technology. Yeah. I'm even 
more fascinated and I find it even more poetic that Bulova is an American brand started by an immigrant. Mm -hmm. uh, that to me, I mean, how do you write a more beautiful story than that? How do you write a more beautiful story than, you know, a young watchmaker who had a paying job at what was then Tiffany and Company comes to New York City, again, an immigrant, right? This is, this is just someone who is starting literally from scratch, yeah. knowing in theory nobody, right. and saying, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ditch my job, I'm gonna start my own company, uh, and, in, and in you know a couple of decades, we're going to be one of the largest, and when I say a couple, I'm it's like three decades. Two guys on the 29th floor of the Empire State Building yeah. talking about the history of my brand. It's bizarre, that is so and there's weird. the man right there, Joseph Bolova. Let me give you a quick rundown of the King's Watch. Obviously, we have yours, which is a modern reissue. You can read all about it on Bolova's site. It's gorgeous, but this is 14 karat gold. Mm -hmm. Very cool, and we'll talk about the part that really got me at the end. But 14 karat gold, Accutron movement, launched in 1960, and it's 32.8 by 32.5. So it's very small watch. Yeah, but the square watches always wear differently. This wears uh, yeah. more like a 36, right? 100%. Like a, yeah, this doesn't wear as a small watch, right. really. I mean, this wears, I would say, as a, what, medium-sized watch? Yeah. Especially on your wrist, it looks fantastic. Oh, this looks phenomenal. But yeah, this was the pinnacle of technology. And then, when we were sitting here chatting, I went to go see it, just to make sure this was 14 karat gold, and you have his initials, EP, on the back. It's nuts. And that's where I was like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> that's God. That's weird. It's wild. That is so crazy. The Prince of the Planet. It's wow. wild. So, yeah, there's really, I mean, what, is, what else is there to say? It's just an insane piece of history to have and to be talking about. It's, and the fact that we're holding it is just insane. I know. It's funky. Again, you know, you get to a certain point in, in your watch collecting journey that funky things are fun and and whether that's color or it's asymmetrical cases, asymmetrical cases are probably even further down the line. You 100%, know? 100%. Um, very few brands made them, very few, even fewer brands did them well. Um, they are coming back, but they're very, very expensive. You know, the popular asymmetrical cases um, by brands are, you know, dozens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's wild, you know, they were made in super small quantities. But anyway, this this obviously isn't, but this is basically, you know, it's not priceless, but this is... <laughs> it's pretty close. Just about, yeah, yeah it's, 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 for argument's sake, it's, it's priceless. It's a good yeah. reminder of how cool we aren't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you ever want to own something that reminds you how cool you're not, buy the Elvis Accutron. Yeah, exactly. But uh, anyway, terrific stuff. Thank you to Bulova for hosting us here today. Yes, thank you so uh, much. Fantastic space. I love the I love the museum. And uh, and that's it. It's great stuff. See you soon.